Welcome to the Jamodi Podcast, where we interview coaches and leaders to find out not just what they do, but how they do what they do. Becoming the best version of ourselves is Jamodi, just a matter of doing it. How do you teach shooting confidence with your teams? They, they, they have to ignore the result. Like shoot, shooting, shooting in our program is about opportunity over time. And if, you know, like, and, and it, it'll inevitably happen with some of our preferred shooters, especially where they'll miss five or six in a row and start looking to the bench as freshmen. And I'll have to look back at them and say, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> are we open? Yeah, <laughs> let's shoot it. You know, like, an, it, I mean, it, We'll, we'll joke in the locker room afterwards, hey, if you go for 20, maybe we'll talk about that 20 <laughs> first. But up until then, you know, if you're open, you got to shoot it. And uh, Process-based, not outcome-based. Yeah. And, and that it, helps shooters it, mentally. It, yeah. And so so the, the objective is in the first 12 seconds, you want two decent looks, decent, uh, out of your best shooter. And then after that, whoever has the ball has to shoot. Mm. You, know, you know, like, and, and, and so it's amazing how many bad shots we make because people will have the ball and then, oh, I got to shoot it. So, it, like, and so they're not worrying about the result and they make them. Yeah. Um, but it's also amazing how we've been able to withstand the test of time and, and continue to score at a high level mm-hmm. because there is that emphasis to get your best shooter more shots. Mm. You know, um, but, yeah, they, they're not allowed, no, no one's allowed to, to, to like it when we, and we evaluate after the game, uh, the first thing, I'll, I'll sit down with the shooter, the first thing I'll look at, how many shots you take? 20, 22. I asked you to get 25. Okay, come on, you got to think about it. Like, like, okay, next. You know, like, it's not whether you went 7 for 22 or 12 for 20, that doesn't matter. Like, it's, like, you, this is what, no. Okay, this this is what we want you to do. You got you're responsible for getting a certain number of shots off. How are you going to do it? Like that's interesting. It just like a lot of a lot of what I listen to or, or read or is about percentage and how to get the higher shooting percentage overall, even as a team, but individually. What are, what are your thoughts there? No, no. Like I, I I've had players that have. Uh, Julian Marx comes to mind as somebody who shot 50% from three in high school. And for his first two years, he would only take a shot. He could make one out of two times. Mm. Well, by his third year, he's one of our best shooters and we needed him to volume. And we we had to make him understand that, you know, it's take waiting for a 50% shot is, is not in the offing here. You're going to have to miss. You're going to have to learn how to, to, to miss and accept the miss. Learn how to miss. Yeah. I only want you shooting 35%. You know, like, and he, he, I was able to coax him down to 42. But, like, <laughs> yeah. but, but still, that was off his 50, like, mm-hmm. like, which was always his mental goal. And I was stuck in his head. Um, it, it, it does take some time with some players that are, have it driven in them. The, the percentages mean everything. The, the percentages, like, we, our, our rule was. Like the John Gropberg, the four years he played, our rule for John was, no, John, you got to get this number of shots up. Okay, if you're playing this number of minutes, you have to find a way to average this number of shots per minute to get this number of shots off. Um, on nights that he was shooting well, we were going to romp. On nights that he was shooting okay, it was going to be a dogfight. And on nights he was shooting poorly, we better be offensive rebounding. Yeah. Like, but like, but but we so we knew, and he was going to be on one out of three games. Mm-hmm. But we knew we were going to win that one. Okay, so we just had to, we had to find a way to scratch and, and, and the nights that he was just average, we had to find a way to win. Mm-hmm. You know, like so that we could we could cover on the nights that he that he was off. But like that gets you two out of three. You know, that's good enough. And, yeah. and, you know, like and and, and and it's just, but it, it's a, it's a, it's just a different mindset that you just not you're not worried about the result because you're protected by numbers. Mm. You know, you just protect, you protect it. You, yeah. you, even our worst shooters, like over the course of a day when they're taking a hundred threes, but they're, they're our worst in the gym is making over 40, hmm. you know, I mean, yeah. that, protected by numbers. Yeah. That, you, yes. If you get your best shooter, if you consistently 
maximize the attempts of your best shooter, you'll be successful. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's simple. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Well, it's a matter of whether or not the other players want to buy into that. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's why it helps if that best player is better than. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Just, this is this is not. An, it, it, I haven't really found a way to be comfortable with the UCLA lineup from the John Wooden years, where everybody's good. Mm. You know that 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 you you could probably do that with a five or six man rotation over time but to try and get 17 or 18 kids to to you know to to think about being equal mm -hmm. it's hard like I, well, that's I, kind of maybe the what the the magic in a bottle that or lightning in a bottle that loyola marymount had those couple of years was they really didn't go that deep they didn't go they deep. were just they incredible did. shape Right. And but they all could do. I mean, they had a couple of main guys, but they were all shooting and stuff. We did. We did try for a couple of years. Um, my son won't do this. I I tried to get him to do that. Do it last year with his group because he 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 was caught in mm -hmm. in the position where he didn't have anybody that was so much better than anybody else. Um, and the the rule was if you made a shot, then there had to be a really good reason why you didn't take the next shot. And so we went on a streak theory. And we did that for a couple of years, like so. It people would know, you know, even if they were out there and they weren't getting a shot off, if they made one, once they once they made one, they would get the second one. Like Streak it, theory, it, I like that. But like, it, and, and we had some unbelievable moments. Like the one, the one I remember the most was like, a, a, it was two thousand and three. A guy named Patrick Choquette, who was not particularly one of our better shooters. Uh, but we're playing against Lake Forest. This is hilarious. <laughs> Just wait, wait till you hear this. Before the game starts, I look out at, at the at their two line layup drill, and I look. I said, "Jeez, I said, don't remind me this." And I said, "Holy crap! Every one of those guys has tattoos on their arm." I said, "Yeah, they do." No, and one of my players, Steve Wood, I think, was said. Those aren't, those aren't tattoos. What are they? I said, the numbers. It turns out every player had the numbers of the, our top four shooters on them. Okay, so you were supposed to look at, at who our shooters were and somehow play them different defensively. Okay, if you were guarded, because you know you go into the game, like uh, the, the, we'd be rotating players in. As soon as the <laughs> shooter group would come in, they'd look at the... All right, so I know these guys are fried to begin with, but like, it was, so, so we go out there and Patrick hits a trail. He gets a rebound, kicks it out, comes down, don't get an early look, kick it back to him. He hits a three on the trail. And so now he knows he's I mean, streak theory. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm looking at, at, the, at the, my assistant saying, ah, Christ, the next possession is going to be a wasted one, but that's all right. Yeah. Like, and so he comes down and he hits another one. The third one, he, 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 it comes down, they pass it to him, he doesn't get a shot off, he goes to the corner, they pass it to him, he hits a third one. But he's, he's one of the most popular guys at the school. The, guy, the crowd is just going crazy. <laughs> he comes down and hits a fourth one. Like, and, and he hits the fourth one, the other coach times up, calls a timeout. The players are running over to the bench, and all of them are going. <laughs> they're pointing it's not, to the it, and saying, "This stuff is not there. What the hell?" Is there? <laughs> Patrick told me for the next ten years, he got that clip. And for the next ten years, he as a motivation, he started his day by watching it. Wow! For the next ten years, that's awesome. Oh my god! <laughs> but okay. Going because there is something in there that the streak theory. Like, the so we play we play a free flowing uh, uh, off a off a make or a miss or a steal. Whenever we possess the ball, live ball, they're going and they have spots to run to. We're trying to up it or attack the paint, looking for for kicks and and early threes. There's just no such thing as early. It, it's the best shot as fast as possible. What I've noticed though, maybe with high school players is. A guy will hit one or two, and it's our guys are very unselfish. It's not intentional, 
but it's they don't continue to actively find that guy because right. streaks and runs and being hot and momentum, they're all real things. And this sure. is a way to maybe even capitalize on that more without telling that, hey, get the ball there. Uh, it's a great idea. It's, it's, if you have balance, it's a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And it's and, and then you then you search in the moment. You know, you search in the moment where somebody makes three in a row and the other team has to call a timeout, and then you just mob the kid. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.